teaching or episode of Glory Road. I have come up here and I teach the Word of God, and hopefully that you'll take something from it. If you can't stay here the whole time, that's okay. Just don't leave till you get a nugget. <laughs> so if you can get a nugget, take something you can meditate on all day, man, that'll be just great. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, what is speaking in tongues. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I may have some Baptists in here saying, oh, my gosh, he's talking about speaking in tongues. Click. <laughs> Just get out of here. But it's not going to be, you know, from the, the typical type of teaching because I think that a lot of the ways that we have been taught concerning speaking in tongues is really kind of, uh, it's a little spooky. And that's what kind of turns people off is that, is that we can't understand it. We don't know what's going on. And we're like, hmm, that's something else. And uh, to me, uh, I want people to understand what I'm saying. I want people to really understand what speaking in tongues is because once you get a hold of what it is, then you can do it all the time. Because God is speaking to you and He's speaking to me all the time. It doesn't mean we hear it all the time, but it does mean He is speaking. God's not a quiet God. I've had people say, well, God's very quiet. He don't speak all the time. Look, if we're created in His image and we talk all the time, then God chooses to talk. It's just not everybody's tuned in to what He's saying. you got all these people, almost, what, 8, 9 billion people in the earth today, and, and, and He's talking to everyone. Don't tell me He doesn't talk. He's communicating with everyone all the time, day and night. When we're asleep, He's talking to people in, in some other country, you know, maybe South Africa or... England or, or Australia, he's talking. So he's constantly moving in our midst. And so, you know, when it comes to this subject of speaking in tongues, we have to understand it so we don't, you know, keep, keep it locked up in some file and say that's some doctrine from a charismatic or Pentecostal sect of the Christianism kind of thing. So let's go over here to Acts chapter 2. We're going to start reading in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So let's kind of back up a little bit and find out what they were, what they were actually doing here. Now we know in Acts chapter 1, he says in verse 8, But ye shall receive power... After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, this is the part that's really spooky to people. Well, who's the Holy Ghost? It's a spirit, you know. And it's just this nebulous form that nobody can see, but it's just in the habits people, and it's real spooky, and it's, a, it's like it's another person in there, you know. But what is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? Now, we talk about the Bible being the Holy Bible, you know, sometimes, oh, it, it says it up, well, you can't see it, my writing's gone, but it says Holy Bible, or you could say the Holy Word of God. Jesus tells us in John 6, 63, that His Word is Spirit and it's life. You could call it this, the Word, His Word, the spoken Word is Holy Spirit life. You got that? So when he says, you shall receive power after that, the, after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he's saying after that the Word comes upon you or rises up on the inside of you. Notice it's a holy thing and it'll have something to do with you preaching, speaking, administering, this Holy Spirit. So you just could say, but you shall receive power after that the Word has come upon you. See, His Word is Spirit in His life. It's the Holy Spirit. It's His Word. 
Now, when you start trying to make it something that it's spooky, <laughs> you, you, you get more into the confusing side of things and you leave yourself to where you can't explain it. And if you can't explain it, then how can you walk it out? You can only walk out what you understand. Okay? So he says, When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the othermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And they stood there steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, beholding two men, and so forth and so on. And there you go. All right, so let's go over here uh, to... Well, you know, he says in one scripture, he tells them to go, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. So that's, you said over here in verse 4 of Acts chapter 1, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which ye have heard of me. For I, John, truly baptized with water, I'm sorry, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, or baptized with the Word of God. Now, baptism means to be totally immersed. So we know over here that they went up to, in verse 24, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. Well, let me get to this other part. Where they went up to, to Jerusalem, went up to, and they found an upper room. They went up in this room, and they stayed there, and they prayed for 10 days. Well, it's, it's inferred for 10 days because Jesus came, appeared to them after his passion for 40 days, teaching them things concerning the kingdom of God. Then, Pentecost means 50. So we're taking this 40, he was here, and then 10 days later was the day of Pentecost. So we're saying about 10 days, they went to Jerusalem, found a place to go in there and be in one accord, 120 of them. And they prayed, and they were supplicating and praying. Okay? Now, what were they doing when they were praying? Our Father, in the name of the Lord, we just want to thank you so much. No, that's not what they were doing. What they were doing was decreeing. They were speaking words. They weren't just they were praying, holding hands, and doing like we do in church. No, they, what, they're, uh, what they're doing is they're ushering in the presence of the Lord. They're ushering in this day of Pentecost. They all had an expectancy that something was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. And they were speaking and declaring and, and talking things and putting things in the atmosphere. And this is where you got to understand words. Words are spiritual things. They're not natural things. They're spiritual things. They can affect the natural because words are spirit and their life. And they're in this upper room getting totally immersed in words. They can't see it, but the, the atmosphere is surcharged with the power of God's life that's in His Word because they're standing there as His representative and they're speaking. Okay, you've got to understand, they weren't there silent going, mm -hmm, Jesus, Jesus. They weren't singing songs like that. They were actually talking the Word, releasing power. Now, if you know anything about my teachings, you're going to find out that the Word coming out of you releases power, releases faith, releases the anointing. It's the glory of God that comes out of them out of you when you do some speaking. So, here they are on the day of Pentecost and they're in this upper room and all of a sudden their eyes are opened. What in the world are they seeing? They're seeing this, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, or they were filled with the Word and began to speak with other tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. Now, now you got to catch this. What is God showing them? Well, it's, it's the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, coming and resting upon them. Have you ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. But what if? Just what if? What's actually happening is their eyes are being opened up to see the words they have been saying and expecting to happen for the past 10 days. And God showed them the power of their words and the life that was in those words. And when they saw what their words were doing, 
what their words actually are. They're looking at this, these wor- words are words are like fire, man. They've got they've got anointing in them. They're like the glory of God. They're refracting the God, the glory of God. Words are like containers that have the, the glory of God in them. And you're speaking words in a spiritual realm. It's not just noise you're releasing here and that's it. Well, nobody heard me. Yeah, but your words are still there. Your words will have an impact on them two weeks later when, when, they, when you thought they didn't even give attention to your word. All of a sudden, something hits them and reminds them of the word. Why? That word is there. It's, it's ever present. It's eternal. It's around them. Words can easily be assigned to people. Words can, can affect people and be there just like that whenever that those words are needed. Words of comfort. Somebody might tell you a month, month before. But all of a sudden, they rise up on the inside of you. It's like you bump into them. They're all around you. So God opened up their eyes to see this fire, this glory that was on their words that they had been speaking for the past 10 days. This is what made it so real to them as they started to realize what kind of power they actually had. Now, you would do the exact same thing if you saw what your words look like in the spiritual realm because your words are spirit in their life. Your words in the mind of God are holy, holy, holy. That's what, when the Lord says, be holy even as He is holy, how can you be holy even as God is holy? Well, if we'll talk like Him, begin to believe that our words have some power to them, then that's how God judges whether those words are words that can be used in the kingdom. Do we talk like a king? What is it that we do? Now, I know a lot of times people say, well, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, and then they read a little bit farther down there, and they had all these people coming from all these different uh, tongues and different uh, backgrounds and all of that, different provinces, and they said, hey, we're hearing people speak in our language and this and that. Now, that is more of the miraculous thing that was taking place, is that these people, God not only opened up their eyes to see words, but he, they were able to see their words in all kinds of languages and have the ability to speak that language. But I can tell you what they were not doing. They were not speaking gibberish. It wasn't just like what I was taught and my family was taught and everybody just get up there and just say any kind of syllable you want to. Now, I know we have done that. We, have, we, we prayed and did those kind of things and, and people started, well, what is he doing? What is she doing? All this other stuff. But it's not about that. The Lord showed me, what, four or five years ago that what it is is that when you speak like God, your words are so full of the glory of God, they become tongues of fire. In other words, they're piercing into that realm. And that's what this is. They're seeing the power of their words. And they're getting immersed in them. That's what it means. They were baptized with these words. They got so immersed in these words, not only when they were saying it, but man, now they're reaping the benefit, the glory that's upon those words they're now receiving. They're in the word and the word is in them. (laughs) See, this is what is so powerful. So I know a lot of times we want to say the Holy Spirit is a person. But what are you when you're speaking words like God? You become a Holy Spirit or Holy Word filled ambassador of Christ in this earth. And God looks at you and says, holy, 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 and your word's got power. We're trying to find the Holy Spirit to drop down from somewhere, and yet the Spirit of God, His word should abide in you. That's why He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will speak, you will have what you say. Your words have fire in them. Your words got power in them to bring to pass what it is you believe in your heart. But as long as we're looking to some spooky kind of person to to somehow sit upon us and make us say something or make us speak in tongues or do all of these things, we're going to totally miss it. God always wants you to be in control. You're never going to be controlled. You're in control. And when you talk like Him in your known language, God can take your language and it be filled with the... See, it's not about your language. (laughs) Look, I I know we think this. (laughs) I thought this for years, too. It's like when you speak, your words come out like typed, you know, in your English language. 
<laughs> you know, if I say, Lord, I love you, it comes out L-O-R-D, <laughs> I-L-O-V, it, it, and it looks like it on the spiritual realm, it's just, you know, English. But it's not. It's fire. It's the glory of God. And when that glory of God hits somebody in Italy, he's going to be able to hear that word in his language. It'll impact him. He'll see it and say it in his language. And possibly, like it, like it did right here, God will move it on you and you'll just open up your mouth and it will be another language. But it's not this unknown thing that, that it's just gibberish. You're just putting syllables out there because you're not in control. You can, know, you can know what you're saying. God will give you interpretation of what you're saying if it's another language like that. But there's a whole lot of spooky teaching, and that's what I'm trying to tell people. You've got to be really careful about that. All right, so let's go to James chapter 3. I'm going to try to get off of this thing as quickly as I can because, you know, you get into other people's traditions and all that. They're like, I'll tell you one thing. That's not what I was taught, and I just believe that... <laughs> and, uh, we got. We finally got to get this thing. All right, James chapter three. Let's start in verse five. I know for those of you who get my notes, I put six, but let's start in verse five. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Now he's telling you, your tongue is a tool, and it releases. He said, we say fire, but he's referring to power, glory. When, when they were looking, I think it was Ezekiel looking at, at God in this image, he said he's, he's like a fire from the loins up to the loins down. It's the glory of God. Why? He's the Word. <laughs> you know, when, you, when it's the Word made flesh, man, everything that comes out of you ought to be tongues of fire. It ought to have some power, some authority in it. Not just a different language or a language you can't understand. It's about fire, power, might, dominion. Verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Now, now you've got to understand, your tongue, I, I, I said this in the message yesterday, our predicament is all the same for everyone in here. We live in two worlds on one earth, and your tongue is it, it's split and we've got to get that thing joined together because you can either choose to speak words of fire that kill and hurt and maim and do all these other things and, and create destruction, or we can speak words of life that heal and restore and refurbish and bring everything back to the way it was in the beginning. But it's all the tongue. So what he's trying to say is you can speak words that are full of fire that kill, or you can speak words that are full of power that destroy or that, that heal. It's our choice. The tongue is just the tool, but the words are the fire. You're releasing the glory of God. This is why I want everybody to get the image of this. Words aren't just sound. It's not just you read it on a piece of paper. It's power. So, and the tongue is a fire world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Now, he's talking about two different types of people here. Ones that we, when we use this tongue, it's either to kill, destroy, or to bless. It can become a world of iniquity. It can be a blessing. It all depends on, are you choosing life, death, blessing, and cursing? How does anybody know what you choose? By what you say. Now, you can't see my words. I can't see yours or nothing. You can't see your thoughts. You can imagine what you're thinking, but there are a lot of thoughts coming to you that, don't, that you just nobody else can see them. The only way they can see what you're thinking is what you're saying. And a lot of times, what you act. And usually your feet can't walk out what your words have not already said. What your thoughts have not already thought. But I'm telling you, your thoughts, your words are power. That's already proven in, in uh, science. It's frequency, man. They can hook these monitors to your brain and all these little sensors and all that stuff. And uh, they can tell when you're thinking something. Good, positive bad, whatever, and they can, they can see it on the screen when you're thinking, when you're just not, and when you're purposely thinking something. They can tell. Well, your words are the same thing. You can speak with purpose and release life, release the glory of God. So what I'm just trying to tell you is on the day of Pentecost, that's what they saw. They saw all that life that they had been speaking, and it just blew them away. I mean, this is what caused uh, Peter to go from somebody who 
didn't know if his words had any power and he's trying to use his hands and cut off, you know, <laughs> uh, centurion's ears and stuff like that and, and soldier's ears and all that. And then once he saw what his words were, he had boldness on that day that he spoke boldly and 3,000 came to the church. All because he saw on the day of Pentecost what his words were. That's all God wants you to know. See, God wants you to know what kind of authority you have. He wants you to know what kind of dominion you have. He doesn't want you just to, you know, believe that there's a spirit here because every day you don't see the spirit descending on you, but you do have the right to speak words. So they were no different than, than we are. When you get a revelation, man, that's like the spirit of God rising up on the inside of you and it makes you want to say something. <laughs> see, when you get an idea, man, it makes you want to start telling people. You just, you get so excited. What is that? You're seeing something. And then it changes your life. One revelation or one word from God that He opens up your eyes to can change your life forever. It'll make you stop doing one thing and start doing the right thing. You see that? So, James chapter 3, words just to know that words are fire, man. They're glory. If you're ever going to release the glory, you're going to have to do it through some words. You can't just walk around touching people. And have your words just get out there all day long, flip-flopping from good to bad, blessing to cursing. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Now I'm in church. So I'm going to start talking really good. It don't work that way. Daniel chapter 6. This will bring some revelation too. Daniel chapter 6. Let me read this to you. His body also was like beryl, if I'm pronouncing that right, and his face as the appearance of God. So, of course, Daniel's taking an image, a look at God here, and he's, he's trying to describe him has the appearance of lightning. So his face, he sees his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps. Now notice the fire. <laughs> he got fire in his face. He's got fire lightning out of his eyes. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is over there in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, 4, and 5, somewhere in there, where it talks about the glories upon the face of Jesus. That's the kind of glory that's a hidden treasure on the inside of you. So his eyes are as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass. In other words, it's shining. He's saying the same thing is on his body as is in his face and his eyes. Listen to this. And the voice of his words like thunder or his words like the voice of a multitude. And this is what it means. And the voice, the word voice means sparks of lightning. The voice, sparks of lightning of his words like the voice or the thunderous sound of a multitude. He's trying to tell you that you're not going to wear the glory all over you and then your words come out being mamsy pamsy. You want to know what God's word is. It's glory. It's sparks of lightning. It's thunderous sound. This is why on the day of Pentecost, they heard us. <laughs> let's go back and read that. On, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound that came where? From heaven. As what? Get this. As a rushing mighty wind. It said it came as a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. It didn't say there was a mighty wind. It said there was a sound as if a rushing mighty wind. See, It was a thunderous sound. That's what your words, whether you can hear it, or see them. They are full of thunderous, glorious sparks of lightning that change everything. And this is what they saw on the day of Pentecost. So as long as you just keep it all down into the doctrines of men, where this is the person of God, and He's just, it's, it's, a, it's a Holy Spirit. It's like a dove. You know, He comes down and then he, he sits upon you. And, and so now you have God walking on the inside of you. Well, that's true, but it's His Word. He says, walk in the Word. You see, he said, walk in the light. What is that? All that he's describing right here is the body of the word. <laughs> you see, he's saying when God speaks, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see it's like a, a body, man. Of, it's a face. It has an appearance. It has lightning. It's eyes. It's lamps. In other words, it's just going out everywhere. It's the power of God. Now, let's go to a couple more scriptures and then we'll be done. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, where shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, 
but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Now, what you got to understand is this. He's saying, he's trying to describe your inner and your outer man. You, spiritual man, are the salt, the, <laughs> the preservative of this earth, of this body. You are the salt of the earth. This body is an earthen vessel. He's not talking about now you just personally go into the world and be the salt to the world. That's true. But if you don't know your inner man is the preservative to this body, and you won't realize that there's a glory on the inside of you that can cause death to get out of the way. Your spiritual man is the preservative. preservative. It is the fire. It is the glory. It is the salt that makes this body live and not die. Not for any just little length of time. Well, you know, God gives us 70, 80. No, he's talking about, no, your, the, your inner man is the salt. Now, now, I want you to hold that in mind. Now, let's go to Mark chapter 4. Verse 49. Did I say Mark chapter? No, Mark chapter 9. I'm sorry. Mark chapter 9, verse 49. For everyone shall be salted with fire. Did you get that? Everyone will be salted with fire. What does that mean? It means your body, everyone's body has the potential to be salted with their inner man. Now, he tells us over here in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So he's trying to tell you that this word on the inside of you, baptized with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or the Holy Word, the word is called breath. It's the breath of God. The same thing they heard on the day of Pentecost. It's the, it's the breath of God. When you're baptized by the word, you're, when you're in the word, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Be baptized in the word. You're being baptized in the thing that will salt your body. It will, and you'll be salted with what? Fire. This is the life of God. He's just trying to tell you, your inner man has life. It's called the salt of the earth. It's the life of this flesh. And when you, this outer man gets so immersed in it, it's going to live. See? That's when you get baptized with the Holy Word, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath of God. And God spoke to that carcass in the Garden of Eden, that body, and He said, be in our image. When he said that, life hit that carcass and Adam's spirit went right in it. What did God do? Well, he salted him. He salted the earth. <laughs> you know? He salted man's earthen body and gave it life. Put fire on the inside of him. Now, Adam's spirit is full of fire, man. It's God's, it's Christ in that body and it's full of fire. See, what Ezekiel, or what Ezekiel was seeing is he was seeing what the Word looks like. He was seeing what, what your inner man, what Christ looks like to show you that's what you have in you. And here we are trying to argue and debate about, well, I think we're speaking in tongues is of the devil. I think speaking in tongues is this. And then everybody gets involved in this gibberish talk and nobody understands that to speak in tongues means to speak in the authority of Christ in you. That's when you're releasing the glory of God. And if anybody believes it, there'll be life in it. They will take the word believing it and it'll salt their body. It'll put fire in them. It'll cause their bodies to live. And somehow we've just missed this thing and we're just keep thinking about the Holy Spirit as a person. He tells you to walk in the Spirit. He tells you to walk in the light. The entrance of God's Word is light. It says I only got two on here. Did I chase everybody away? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, man, this guy don't know what he's talking about. The truth is, is I've come to understand that God gave you to have dominion and He gave you power and might. And it's in your words. And as long as we're trying to put it off on some Holy Spirit somewhere, God in, in us somewhere, we're putting everything on Him, we'll never stand up in authority. We'll never be the ones being responsible for what we say. 
And I want you to understand, speaking in tongues is nothing more than speaking life. Speaking with authority. Speaking what you hear God say on the inside. Speak it as if it's God Himself. There's power in those words you can't see. And that's the thing. You can't walk by just what you see out here in this natural realm and think your words don't have any authority. They actually do. Get a hold of this concept today. Go and watch this video and watch this teaching. Listen to it when you get a chance. And until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.